What's the crack, lads? We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back, we're back, and we're going to be doing some Player of the Week reviews. So, we're back. Appreciate you guys and all the support. We will be streaming throughout the next few days. But first, we're going to take a look at the Player of the Week selection that you have here, Van de Ven. Finally, we get a fast Van de Ven. These cards are available. You can get two free spins over playing the events against the AI. You're going to have a chance at getting any of the 11 here. You've got Aldi, you've got War Pros, you've got Mancini, you've got Pelotano, you've got Minta, you've got a couple of players here that are definitely worth spinning for if you are looking to get the free spins. I don't know if these are worth coins. Now, you can actually get five of the 11 here. You get your two free spins from playing against the AI in the events, and you could potentially, you know, duck in and duck out with getting Havertz and Van de Ven, or Rico Leos is a very, very good player as well. He's just an average box-to-box -box DMF. I mean, I mean, he's got his face off, which I don't know what is going on with some of the faces, but this is definitely nothing like him. I mean, he looks like... I don't even know what he looks like, man. He looks like your man out of um, Breaking Bad, Gus. Gustavo. He looks like about 60 years of age, man. I don't know what's going on with him. But yeah, he's got standard form. But other than that, it's a fairly decent card. You can actually train up a bit of this card. Um, his standard card, you can train up his standard card to kind of match this or train up another player like Barella to pretty much outperform somebody like this. So it doesn't have a booster either, which is a bit of a pity. As you can see in the top right hand corner, lads, we have loaded up all the donations, everything that we got over the last two weeks um to spin so we might spin later on for seaman and for trent and stevie g let's see but for these player of the weeks i don't know if they're worth it you've also got nico williams here his tight possession and balance isn't too bad for a left midfielder and a left winger that can play both sides plus he's also got the booster that to his dribbling which is nice technique plus three is going to be locked to him being on a rating that is something that i definitely think they need to look at because he does have soul control and double touch, but he doesn't have flip flap, so he can't do ball roll. So straight away, I'm kind of not really recommending this guy if you like to dribble a lot. But I do like the fact that he can play both sides, left or right, across midfield and wing. So it is a nice car with 95 speed, good balance, good tight possession, good ball control and dribbling. And all of these stats that you see here are without the manager boost. Which, of course, I don't pay much heed on the manager boost, lads. I swear, I don't. And the reason why I don't is because once they introduce new managers, which we've already seen with Xabi Alonso, Now and Pep, I feel like that that is kind of something that they'll just continuously tweak. Now, Havertz is a good one as well. The rest of these players on here, including Aldi here at the back, this guy, lads, I just have a love-hate relationship with him. He's too slow. He's too clunky on the ball. He's quite tall and strong for an attacking midfielder kind of version of him. CMF, he's got some nice soul control, double touch, but no flip-flap. He's got one touch and true passing, but no low lofted. So he's kind of neither here nor there for an AMF or a CMF. I feel like he's not fast enough or rapid enough or mobile enough for a really good running gun attacking midfielder. Goalkeepers, I never talk about any of these goalkeepers in the player of the week slides, especially one that doesn't have a face and doesn't have low punt. Again, I just don't see the point of them with no disrespect to the player or to the team if they're a team that you follow. This guy, again, has got rapid pace, really big speed, but bad balance and tight possession for a winger. And also, I think that, you know, one touch pass is nice, but he doesn't have any dribbling stats uh, that are worth shouting home about. And he doesn't have any dribbling skills to shout home about. It's just pure power and pace when he's running, which doesn't really work in the game. Excuse me. My throat's a little bit sore. War Pros is obviously then going to have no pace, but going to be deadly from dead ball, especially special areas such as free kicks and all that. He's also got a booster that's going to top up his set piece taken to 100. We haven't seen as good a free kick taker in the game compared to uh, War Pros, unless it's Beckham you're talking about. And he's got some really good player skills, and he can play CMF, or of course he can play AMF and uh, right midfielder. Free kick taken plus three. That is going to be a goal a game if you get into dangerous areas and you draw a lot of fouls. So if you are playing for getting frees and scoring goals out of it, he's not bad. Defensively, very, very poor, but I wouldn't be playing him as a CMF. It would be AMF all the way and literally just kind of like shooting on sight and getting free kicks and kind of carrying him in the team for you to get, to get goal scoring opportunities. We also have our right back here as well. This guy doesn't really have a face either. It's kind of like a mismatch between his real face and a kind of generic face. Not the best version of him. 83 balance, 81 type possession, attack and full back. Very poor defensively, as usually most attack and full backs have. Not great player skills, no defensive player skills whatsoever. And I just genuinely don't see you playing this guy that much unless you're really, really new to the game. 
And we've already covered Minta there as well. Palatano, this guy is definitely always going to be overshadowed by the likes of Cavaradona. But this guy isn't too bad. He's a little bit faster than um, the other version of him that they released a while ago. He also has double touch and flip flap, but he doesn't have soul control. And super sub is there with gamesmanship. So again, you might be able to draw a few fouls with him. But yeah, for me overall, lads, I, t I definitely think even with Mancini here, who doesn't get a boost for he's down as a destroyer. And we've had multiple versions of this card as well. I feel like all of these cards, apart from maybe Van de Ven and Havertz, I, I feel like are kind of a waste. The Havertz doesn't get the booster here. It's just a normal deep line forward. I honestly couldn't see you playing Havertz if you're going to be using a center forward up front. There's so many better alternatives to him. Save up and get free GP Mbappe. Again, you know, I will see people in the comments saying like, oh, you know, don't recommend Mbappe all the time. Not everyone wants to play with the meta players. I mean, if you're not playing with the meta players, that's fine. But then none of these, you know, any player, you can use any player. You know, we've had dozens and dozens, hundreds of games using Collar up front, which is the most non-meta player in the game currently at the moment. You know, Giroud, Collar, Ibrahimovic, if you still have an old Ibrahimovic card. You, if you're playing for fun, you can literally use, you know, you can put my granny up front and she'll score for you. It, it it depends what you're trying to get out of the game you know you are making things harder for you if you don't play meta and that's just the truth of it i also think that van de ven is definitely probably the pick of them um i know i don't usually get too excited about player of the week players but this guy is a booster without a manager boost here is really really nice like you're going to be having 89 defensive awareness 90 tackling 88 aggression and defensive engagement as 88 as well with 91 speed with the booster that's phenomenal for a center back that's 193. Phenomenal. Puts him in league with Tommy Yashu. And then also, when you kind of look at it here, he does have man mark and interception, blocker, aerial superiority, slide and tackle, and fighting spirit. The only thing he doesn't have, and obviously you can't give it to him, is acrobatic clearance. But even at that, I feel like acrobatic clearance, nobody really plays to, 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 to a target man anymore. I mean, I don't know how many games, you know, you guys have played. Obviously, you might be starting off. You might have played for the last two years. The, the, the meta and even the way that people play, I would say nine out of 10 people play with the ball on the deck. You know, they don't use a target man. They don't do knockdowns apart from corner kicks. Um, they don't really play to the big man up front to get flick ons to, you know, lay the ball, ball off. It's usually touching goals, triangles, um, article, you know, one twos. That's kind of what it is. So Van de Ven is definitely mobile enough. I do also like the fact that he's going to be getting a big boost if you have 10 Hag. You're going to be getting an even more boost to speed. That's going to bring it up nearly to 95. And also his defensive stats are going to be going up plus two as well with the booster. So you're talking about every single stack going to be in the 90s for defense and his, his speed is going to be very high. And on top of that, you've got physical contact and heading quite decent, rounded off by some really nice player skills. So I definitely think he's the pick of it. But is it worth spinning 10 other players to get Van de Ven? Or if, if you do get Van de Ven and you get Nico Williams, like, listen, if you do the event and you get Van de Ven for free, it's a massive, massive, massive boost to your squad. Even if you got like end game level meta squad, you know, with Maldini and Araujo and Tommy Etchew, because he's on A rating. But if you are spinning in the hopes of getting Van de Ven and it takes you to two freebies, which takes you about 40 minutes to complete the challenge. And then also you don't get him in 300 coins. It is going to be a big sour taste in your mouth. So is it worth the one in 11 chance of getting him? You know, you've got a, what, 9% chance of getting him or something around that, 10% chance of getting him. Um, I feel like that it's it's going to be a difficult one. I, I, I don't recommend any of the rest of these players. It's actually quite a poor player of the week selection, to be honest with you. Nico Williams, Havertz and Lewis are the three top picks apart from Van de Ven. And you can get better GP alternatives for all of these, in my personal opinion. So let me know what you guys think. I will be back in a little bit. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll talk to you in a bit. Peace.